Hello everybody and thank you for joining us. And today we'll be discussing the Patron Waitlist for Digital Resources, CDL Controlled Digital Lending in Alma. This is Yoel Kortik, Senior Librarian at Ex Libris in our Jerusalem headquarters. And what are we going to be doing today? We'll be briefly looking at this PowerPoint. The PowerPoint will be only briefly. We will primarily be looking inside Alma. The PowerPoint is available on the Ex Libris Knowledge Center. And those of you viewing this via YouTube, you'll see in the description of the video on YouTube, there is a link to this PowerPoint presentation. So you're all free to download and view. And we're just going to look at it briefly. So a brief introduction here. Uh, what is the patron waitlist for digital resources? Well, it deals with the, the CDL, the Controlled Digital Lending, which determines, uh, first of all, how many concurrent users can view a digital object, how long they can view a digital object, and the main part is that those users who want to view the digital object and cannot, due to the limitations of concurrent users, they can join the waitlist. And the waitlist is, as the name suggests, a list of those users who are waiting to view the digital resource. First come, first serve basis, those people who already went into the Primo Discovery, uh, later Leganto as well, viewing a resource, and they, the number of concurrent users is already maximized. The next user will get a message that he or she can join the waitlist. Similar in a way to those of you who are familiar with physical item requests in the hold shelf, an item goes to the hold shelf so that someone else can loan it. If that person doesn't come in on a certain amount of time and loan it, it goes to the next person. Same thing here. We've got a certain amount of people, might be one concurrent user, might be two, uh, might be more viewing a digital resource. Other people want to come and view that digital resource and they wait in line to view it. Uh, we're going to look at how this is defined. We're going to look at how to configure the patron wait list and then we're going to go in and do the actual flow inside Primo with multiple users. So let's start with the access rights. So let's jump into Alma. And we're going to go to the configuration menu. Let's go to the configuration menu and to fulfillment and copyright management access rights. I'm in fulfillment, copyright management, access rights. And I'm going to look at a previously defined access right. And it's called the YLK1 concurrent users access rights policy. Let's take a look and see what we got here. So we have a denied note. One user is already viewing this digital object. Please request to be added to the waitlist. Soon we're gonna see that inside Primo and I'm gonna say this is the denied note that we defined inside the details section of the access rights policy and we'll see it there. Then we've got another one called the denied note override for unregistered users. And that, as the name success, suggests, is for unregistered, also known as unlogged in, not logged in users. So that will be for the not logged in users. The denied note will be for the logged in users. And if there is no denied note override for unregistered, then the regular denied note here will always be used. Now let's look at the rule on the bottom. So I've got a rule here called one user at a time. That's just the name that I gave it. And let's go take a look at it. Now, the rule, as you know, is comprised of expressions. And we've got one expression here called one users within three minutes. Let's take a look. So this is defining the number of concurrent users is one. Then there's another field within in minutes. This is how long the user is allowed to view the resource. And we will, we have it set here for three minutes. Now in the real world, of course, it's going to be longer than three minutes, but I want to show a full flow until the user gets kicked out or his time is expired. Uh, and therefore, I don't want to wait 30 minutes or even 15 minutes for, <laughs> for the time to be up. 
So I got it three minutes so we can do a nice flow here and see the user get expired and the other user get a message, et cetera, et cetera. So that's good. I'll click cancel because we didn't do any changes. Then we've got another rule here, another expression, excuse me, another expression inside the rule saying the patron needs to be registered, which means he needs to be logged in. Uh, so that's just registered equals true. And that's fine. Pretty clear. Then we have a very important section here. In order to use the whole waitlist feature, the whole feature that I mentioned that one user can register to viewer the digital object after another user is done, in order to have that be in use, we need to check here the manage access waitlist. So that's checked. We have a grace period here of 10 minutes. The grace period is the amount of time the user has from the time he or she gets the message that the resource is available until he or she goes and views it. Otherwise, it moves on to the next person in line. If we go back to the analogy of the physical item requests and the item goes to the hold shelf, same principle. Someone doesn't come to pick up the item, it goes to the next person. Same thing here. You don't view your digital resource, it goes to the next person. Then we've got an option here, which we're not using in our case, limit wait list to specific hours. It might be that the institution wants to use it from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., but not from, five, uh, not from 5.01 to 7.59 in the morning or whatever it will be. It's possible to limit that the wait list is in use for certain hours. Then we've got our output section. We have checked allowed view and we did not check allow download. And that's because if, we, if we're dealing with kind current users, then doing allow download uh, would kind of defeat the purpose because uh, someone would be able to download it and view it, perhaps even share it. But in any case, we're not allowing download. Okay, so that's our access rights rule. The important part here that I wanna stress is the waitlist management. And we've explained that. Manage access waitlist is in use. So there's our access right. Now, in order for this access right to be used by the system, it needs to be applied to a digital resource. So let's go get a digital resource. I actually have one that already has this applied to it. Let's go take a look at that. We'll go digital titles. And we have one called Outrageous in Every Day, The Papers of Gloria Steinem. In fact, I think I'll take that with me. So when we search in Primo, I'll just have it already ready to search. Okay, so let's take a look at the representation. And edit. And you'll see here in the General Information tab, there's an Access Rights field. And here I've applied this access right that we looked at a moment ago with the one concurrent user for three minutes, the denied note, etc. cetera. Uh, we've applied that to this digital resource, which means if a user searches for this, this digital resource, the whole waitlist management using that access right will be in effect. For other resources, it will not be in effect. Now we're going to test it out. Before we test it out, let's go take a look at the steps we're going to use to test it out. This is the flow of the patron, both patrons or multiple patrons, trying to view the resource. And in our case, we're going to use two users, A and B. Our A will be Alicia Hen and our B will be Ellie Mae Clampett. So user A, Alicia, searches Primo, finds the resource. Uh, she'll get a message that she needs to be logged in to view the digital resource. That's if she's not logged in. If she is logged in, uh, she'll be able to view it. Um, logs in and views the digital resource. User B, Ellie Mae, will search Primo, find the same digital resource, but then see that she can't view it, but she can join the wait list. User B will get an email uh, that the waitlist, excuse me, that she has successfully joined the waitlist. 
then the time period for user A will end, or the user A will do early checkout. We'll see what that is. User B will get an email that the digital object is available, and then user B will view the digital object. And let's go do that live. So in Chrome, Primo, I'm already signed in here, but I'm going to sign out and sign in just to get everything from scratch. So in Firefox, we've got Alicia, user A, is signing in. Alicia Chen. Then in here, Ellie Mae Clampett is already signed in, but I want to sign out and sign in just so I'm doing everything right from scratch. Sign in, and that will be Ellie Mae. Login. Okay. So here we go. In Firefox, Alicia Hen searches library catalog, finds the resource available online, and views it. No one else is viewing it. She doesn't get any special messages. Everything's fine. Notice we got an early checkout, which means she can check out and say, okay, I'm done with it. She can also see here how long she's got. Now, we said it's three minute total when we looked at our concurrent users uh, for an amount of three minutes each. So it's already been uh, 22 seconds because it, it was two, whatever. It's now two minutes and 33 seconds left. So let's pop over now to Chrome. And here comes Ellie May. Ellie May comes and searches for it. And here it is. And Ellie May gets a message. One user is already viewing this. Please request to be added to the waitlist. That's the denied note that we saw in the details section of the access rights. And now join the waitlist. So she joins the waitlist and gets a message. You have been added to the waitlist. Let's go see. There it is. She got an email now. It says zero minutes ago right now. And it says you have been added to the waitlist for accessing, etc., etc. You are currently number one in the waitlist. A, no a notification will be sent once the resource becomes available. I'm going to leave this here for a moment. We're going to come back because I want to see here. Everything is carefully timed here. One minute and 26, five seconds left for Alicia, user A. After that time, it'll be available for user B in Chrome. Of course, I'm just using Firefox and Chrome to make things easier here. It really doesn't matter what browser you're using. Unless Alicia here does early checkout, which we've got over here, watch what's gonna happen now in one minute. Boom, we get a message what, when one minute is left, the user gets a message of how much more time they have. Let's let that run out. <coughs> Even though, like I said, I could click early checkout here, and that would make it available for the next user. Uh, let's continue this email here that she got. So a notification will be sent once the resource becomes available. In other words, once the other user is done, you will have 10 minutes to start viewing because that was the grace period we defined. We defined a grace period when we were looking at that access right. You will have 10 minutes to start viewing the resource before it will be passed on to the next user in the wait list. Sincerely, the resource management department. How are we doing here? Uh, it's five seconds. So let's see what's going to happen here. A message is going to come up on the screen. Um, that, there we go. Your session has expired. Close. There's also a renew option there. Uh, we're going to save that for another day, uh, but similar to a physical item, but we have someone here waiting for it, so it won't be so simple to do. Okay, so let's see what's going to happen now. Let's come back to Chrome, and, ah, great. So now we've got the item available. User B, Ellie Mae Clampett, item available, outrageous in every day, the papers of Gloria Steinem. 
So now Outrageous in Every Day is now available for you. This is going to give um, access to it, or the user could come along and do a search here and click it, or directly from here, I'm already logged in on the browser, so what's it gonna know? Click directly from here, <coughs> and there we go. Now Ellie may, may clamp it. Uh, her time is now, and now she can view the digital object. So Alicia Hen viewed it for her allotted time, which was three minutes. While she was viewing it, along came Ellie Mae Clampett, wanted to view it, couldn't, signed up to be on the wait list, got a message that she was confirmed on the wait list, then got another message that the resource was available, and then was able to view the resource. Thank you very much, everybody. And we look forward to seeing you for our future webinars. Have a nice day.